Final Fantasy Fiat Rhythm Final Bar Line is dropping in about two more weeks. Square Enix just dropped a brand new demo that features 30 songs that you can play through, and I just got done playing through all of them. So what did I think about the game? Let's talk about it. Before we talk about the game though, go ahead down below, comment what you think about Final Fantasy Fiat Rhythm Final Bar Line. Let me know if you've played this demo. While you're down there as well, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button as well, and hit the notification bell as well to be notified whenever I upload. With all that said, let's talk about Fiat Rhythm. So first I have to mention that I am not only just a huge fan of the Final Fantasy series, but the music in the series is one of the biggest reasons why I like the series so much. I'm someone who realistically for some of these games, not all of them, but for some of them, if it weren't for just how great the sound design and how great the music is and all of the composers, just how talented they are, if it weren't for the work that they do, some of these games I might have not even finished in the past. That's how much I just hold music in general, that's how high I hold it, like as a standard for me when it comes to video games and stuff like that. It's gotta have good music, it's gotta have good sound design and things like that. That is something that I really, really value, that's something I appreciate, and Final Fantasy consistently, like almost, almost every time, without fail, has brought us so much good music over the years. And the Final Fantasy Theat Rhythm series is nothing but a huge celebration of the music of the series. Square knows just how much we love these tracks, and so thankfully they have devised teams to bring us games that are just nothing but the music of the Final Fantasy series. And if you're a fan of, of like, Guitar Hero like I am, or other rhythm games of that nature, or even maybe you've recently played Kingdom Hearts A Melody of Memory. This is going to completely scratch that itch for you, I think, as far as just a rhythm game, a music game. This game is fantastic. And this particular Fiat Rhythm game, Final Bar Line, I would equate this to the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate of the Fiat Rhythm games. This game, just alone, whenever it fully releases, is going to include, I think it was 385 songs, close to 400 songs. Not many rhythm games have that many songs that you can play through. This is really impressive, and these aren't just short little songs. Some of them are on the shorter side, but some of these songs can last up to like five, six minutes sometimes. These are not short songs, and the fact that we can spend all this time with all these different difficulties, going through these games, trying to beat high scores and things like that, we're going to be spending a lot of time with this game. Just the base game alone, not even talking about the DLC or anything like that, which <laughs> there is a lot of DLC. The base game includes so many songs. I imagine that if you're trying to just get good scores and just finish through the game and play every song in the game, I imagine that this is going to I think it's gonna hit that dollar per hour mark. You know, I think it's a full price game, like 60 bucks. And for what it's what it's giving you, just as a base game without any of the side content or DLCs, I think that this is going to be an incredibly high value video game. But let's go ahead and just talk about the demo. Square Enix, like I said, just put out this demo with 30 songs. I just got done playing through each and every one of the songs. So let's go ahead and real fast just break down what this demo includes. In this demo, we can play through songs from Final Fantasy II, Final Fantasy V, Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy XIII, Final Fantasy XIV, and Final Fantasy XV. In Final Fantasy II, we have four songs, Battle One, Main Theme, The Rebel Army, and Town. In Final Fantasy V, we have six songs, Battle One, Battle Two, Four Hearts, Harvest, Main Theme of Final Fantasy V, and Mambo de Chocobo. For Final Fantasy VII, they give us five songs, The Chase, Fight On, Let the Battles Begin, Main Theme of Final Fantasy VII, and Opening Bombing Mission. For Final Fantasy XIII, they also gave us five songs, Blinded by Light, Defiers of Fate, Desperate Struggle, March of the Dreadnoughts, and Saber's Edge. For Final Fantasy XIV, they gave us seven songs, Hard to Miss, The Land Breathes, Nemesis, On Westerly Winds, Serenity, To the Sun, and Torn from the Heavens. 
And for Final Fantasy XV, they gave us Apocalypsis Noctis, The Fight Is On, and Stand Your Ground. So just in this demo alone, we have a pretty solid track list. Even Final Fantasy XIV, I mean, you can see that one easily has the most amount of music that they let us try out. Well, whopping seven songs. It's pretty crazy. I personally wish that for something like Final Fantasy XV, we might have gotten more than three. Maybe we could have delegated some of those 14 songs into 15, but what we have here is still pretty good. So let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. So in this demo, it allows you to play through both field music and battle music. Both the field and the battle music kind of play in a very similar fashion. For battle music, aesthetically, the screen is laid out kind of like an old school Final Fantasy battle system. You got the main characters on the right side of the screen and the enemies on the left side. Right above the characters, you have the window where you are supposed to hit the notes as they come at you. You have four bar lines where the music notes are coming and you have red, yellow, and green. The red notes are single notes that you're supposed to hit. You hit the yellow notes by flicking the joystick the direction that it tells you to flick it and you hold down a button on the green notes until the green note ends and that is essentially the main gameplay system. Every now and then you'll have a moment where you are hitting two notes at once or at the end of a long note it might want you to flick a certain direction but in general that is basically the entire gameplay system. The notes come at you and you hit it on beat with the music. The field music works a bit differently. Aesthetically, you basically just have your four main characters walking on the bottom of the screen to the music and they come across enemies and you can attack them and use magic against them and all this stuff. You hit notes, you hit enemies, and then you attack and then you just keep moving forward until you finally reach the end of the song. Instead of four bar lines, you just have one and each note comes at you just on the one line and you have to make sure that you hit the notes as they come into the hit window. Really the big gameplay switch up here other than the singular bar line is with the green notes that you hold down, they kind of move in an upwards and downwards manner like hills and valleys and stuff. Basically with those, you just have to move the joystick up or down depending on which direction the line is going. If you're holding down the, you know, the button to hit the note and the line is going up, you just hold the up joystick stick you're, or up on the joystick and then once it starts going down you just hold down on the joystick and you get a perfect critical every time it's really just as simple as that one thing that i personally noticed just particularly here with the field music portion with that long green note where it's going up and down for me as someone who played the games on the nintendo 3ds this was kind of the thing that I was most wondering how it's going to work. Now that we're playing this game on consoles, it's not touch screen or anything like that. You know, the 3DS games, obviously, they pretty much were solely touch screen. The entire game, you, you tap the screen or you swipe it a certain direction, or if you follow a green line that's moving around, you have to follow it with the, the stylus for the 3DS. So this was the big thing that I was wondering. We don't have a stylus here. What are we gonna do here? I initially thought in my mind we might be using like the touchpad or something on like the PS5 controller or the PS4 controller, but it's also on the Nintendo Switch. So I thought, well, maybe they program it differently. You do touch screen. No, it's really just as simple as just holding up or down, depending on whether or not the line is going up and down. It doesn't not work. I think it works pretty fine for what it is. If anything, I think it might be just a bit more simplistic compared to what it was on the Nintendo 3DS because there's really no precision there. If the line's moving up, you just point the joystick up. If the line's moving down, you just point the joystick down. Whenever you're playing with a stylus on those, you kind of have to make sure that you, you keep it in the lines, you know? If it's moving up, you have to move up with it at the exact pace. If it's moving really fast, you're having to follow and make sure that you're you know, it's staying on that green line at the speed that it's moving. But for this, it's like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Like if it's moving really fast, you know? And I've played it on harder difficulties and it, it can get pretty fast, you know? But I just kept thinking that if this was on 3DS, almost certainly I would be having a much more harder time just because I feel like it would require more precision and a bit more skill maybe if it were, you know, using a touchpad. But this is just one little thing that I've noticed that I, I don't necessarily think 
is a bad thing, right? Because the gameplay itself and the music that are that's in here, everything feels really satisfying. This is just now we are we're just changing form a little bit. Instead of it being a fully touch screen experience like the previous games, this is a game that allows you to use a controller the entire time. And that's that's pretty much all you have. So for things like this, I don't know, this is just something that caught my eye and something that I felt like was worth mentioning just in my personal impressions of the demo. Like I said, I don't think that this is a bad change. I think it makes sense. I think what they have placed here instead of using a stylus, I think it works fine. It's it's just different. Outside of playing the actual game and, you know, going through the music and stuff like that, you do have characters that you can swap in and out of your party. In mostly typical Final Fantasy fashion, you have four party members that you can swap in and out. You don't have to have a specific party at all times for whatever specific game you're playing through or anything like that. You can swap them in and out and create your own party. For instance, if you want Bart's going on an adventure with Tifa and Hope and, I don't know, Guy from Final Fantasy 2. You know, like, if you want that to be your team, you can absolutely do that. You can make whatever dream team you want, and that's, that's awesome as far as customization goes. Whenever you start the game, you do only have the specific characters for whichever game you decide to start playing the music in. For instance, whenever you start what I guess would be considered the campaign here, even though there's no real story as far as I can tell, whenever you start series quest mode, you have the option to choose any series from the six series that it gives you from the start. You have one key and you can unlock one series. So let's say you start with Final Fantasy 2. You're pretty much locked into only playing Final Fantasy 2 songs until you finish the couple of songs that the demo gives you and then it gives you another key and then you can use that key to unlock the other five series final fantasy five or seven you play through those and you unlock characters depending on when you've decided to open up that game so if you want to play final fantasy seven songs using final fantasy 15 characters you have to first at least play through final fantasy 15 the, the songs that it gives you in there, and then you can use those party members in the Final Fantasy VII game. As you're customizing your party, you can see that they all have certain skills. At the very beginning, before you play the game, none of these characters have any skills attached to them. You gain skills by leveling up, and you level up by playing through songs. It's a real easy sort of function. If you want your characters to become stronger so that you can go back and finish little side quests in songs that you weren't able to do before because you just weren't strong enough. You can go into your character stats, you can equip them with abilities that they've obtained over the course of just playing through songs, uh, and there's even an auto-optimize button. If you're someone like me sometimes who doesn't even want to have to go through the hassle of looking through every single ability that a character has, you just want them to have whatever the game thinks is the most optimized equipment and you know abilities set for that character you can quickly just press triangle or i guess y on the nintendo switch controller and then boom you have your fully optimized team speaking of side quests every single time that you jump into a song before you actually start you can look at the screen it gives you the name of the song and all this stuff and right beneath it you have certain goals you have your main goal which you know, gives you some really good items and goodies and stuff. And then you have a completion goal, or I, I think that's what they're calling it. You have like sort of a bonus goal. So for every song that you do, you have these different goals, like these different little quests in each song. And it'll be something like defeat nine enemies, kill this summon or something like that, you know, just goals. Once you accomplish that goal, you get special items. You can go ahead and look at another tab outside of the menu where you look at artwork and you can listen to music and all this stuff. This is all just stuff that's unlocked through finishing the side quest. However, the songs that you unlock in the music player, just once you've played through a song and you've finished the song, no matter what sort of quests you've accomplished or anything, once you finish a song, that gets logged back into your 
music player, which is another setting. If you are, if you're just someone who keeps the game running or something like that, you can go on shuffle, you can go through singular games or just pick singular songs, have them on repeat and all this stuff. You can listen to every single song that's in the game. And that is an excellent feature. Like I said though, in regards to something like Final Fantasy XIV, I love every single song that they have given us here in the demo. I imagine that I will love every other song that I got that I get to play that's not in the demo. There, there's just some stuff like that though where in this demo I would have liked to play through more songs say from Final Fantasy XV. Yoko Shimomura is one of my favorite composers of all time. I really love the song Apocalypsis Noctis. However, the other two songs felt a little weird for the demo, especially since one of the songs is really similar to the battle theme, uh, Blinded by Light from Final Fantasy XIII. So I felt like, because I know the music in that game fairly well, and it, I don't know, I just felt like maybe for this demo we could have gotten maybe some more songs, or maybe swapped out the three that we had, I'm not totally sure. All this to say, I've seen the whole track list for what is going to be included in the full game, and I just, I know I'm not going to be disappointed. I love all these songs. It's awesome. Even games like Final Fantasy XIV, that game alone has a whopping 33 songs just from that one game alone. A bunch of these games have a ton of songs once the full game is out. Not every game. I know games like Final Fantasy Tactics, that game has like less than 10 songs or something like that. Uh, but Nonetheless, I mean, everything that we're, we're getting here, I'm just glad that we're even getting tactics content just in the base game here. I played through every song on here on both beginner mode and expert mode, and expert mode isn't even the expert difficulty of this game. The ultimate mode is the hardest difficulty here, and even just on expert mode, guys, I mean, this game... This game gets sweaty, not gonna lie. I mean, <laughs> you, you, the, there, there's some dicey moments here, just even in the base game. I mean, this is not just some easy peasy little rhythm game, especially, I mean, if, if you have knowledge of these tracks, if you know the songs well, that is going to help you in the long run. As someone who has not played a whole lot of Final Fantasy XIV, these songs here, like I said, they're amazing songs and I enjoyed playing through them, I enjoyed listening to them, but I didn't know them very well. So when it came to weird little rhythm changes or, you know, time signature changes or something like that, it, it kind of caught me off guard. So this is one of those games that either you better know these songs pretty well, or you're going to get to know these songs really well, you know? So keep that in mind going forward. This is definitely a game for people who love the music in the Final Fantasy series and for the most part already know these songs. But also, if you haven't played these games, if you don't know these tracks, they're great. This is a fantastic way to learn the music. Even for something like Final Fantasy XV, it's interesting to kind of see the series progress. Earlier games in the series have very distinct themes to them, like very, very memorable melodies and things like that. Just stuff that gets stuck in your head and stuff that you hum to yourself. Not that the more atmospheric nature of games like Final Fantasy X and onwards, like not like those don't have memorable tracks that you sing to yourself, but as you're playing games like Final Fantasy 13 or 14 or 15, yes, you hear the music and it sounds beautiful, it sounds great, but it also very much so sounds like background music. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but when it comes to playing something like a rhythm game and you have these very ambient pieces that are playing in the in the background of these video games whenever you whenever you're playing through those, whether it be a a combat song or, you know, a field song. It, for me, even though it's like I know I've heard this song, the game kind of trains you to sort of really notice the song, you know? Now that I've played through some of these songs from Final Fantasy 14 and 15, now whenever I go and play those games, I'm really gonna recognize them and really know them. You'll have to forgive me, one of my lights just died on me. So if, if the lighting and the coloring looks different now, <laughs> it's because that light died. Other little gameplay things here and there that happen, uh, you can actually assign summons. As you're playing throughout the game, you can find summons that can join your party and things like that. But whenever you equip a summon to your party, it's not like you just have Shiva or you just have Ifrit or Bahamut or something like that. You kind of have different 
types of Shiva and different types of Bahamut and Ifrit and things like that. You, if you want a Shiva that does one specific move, you have that. You can equip that and only that summon to your party. If you want a different kind of Shiva that does a different kind of move, you can equip that one to your party. Another thing about the summons is whenever you are playing the game and the little summon bar at the bottom of the screen you know, reaches its maximum and then the summon comes out and does a big move. It can sometimes be a little distracting. Knights of the Round, for instance, I was playing through a fairly complex song. I wish I could remember which one it was, but the summon came out and he did a bunch of stuff <laughs> and it was all right there where the hitbox is for, you know, where the light, the, the notes are coming in. I was like, okay, come on, dude, get off the screen. I literally can't see what I'm doing at all. So it's kind of this double-edged sword. It's it, like, it looks really cool. It does a lot of damage, but for that powerful thing to be summoned out there onto the field, it's also kind of a, okay, here you go. Here's a big, powerful ability. But in return, we're gonna make your visibility just be that much harder on the notes that are coming at you so take that as you will some of the from what i noticed some of them were super just simple animations and they weren't very distracting knights of the round was the big one in particular that i was like whoa i i can't see what i'm doing at all all in all this demo is fantastic it's an excellent showcase of what's to come and even better even though it's only letting you progress up to a certain point in the game all of your save data, all of your high scores, all of your little achievements and stuff that you unlock in the game, everything transfers over to the full game whenever you get it. So if you played the PS4 demo and you're planning on buying the Switch version, maybe reconsider, maybe play through the demo again on the Switch version or something, because maybe you're fine with replaying everything just to get back to where you were in the demo. But this saves a lot of time. This saves a lot of hassle. I love whenever video games do this. Whenever they say, hey, here's a game. It's basically the whole beginning of the game. Go ahead and play it. Once you buy the game, everything just transfers over. All of your save data transferred. Beautiful. There's still a game mode, I believe, that's not included here in the game, but ultimately what we have here as far as just the field music and the battle music this was a very very competent demonstration of what final fantasy fiat rhythm final bar line has to offer so let me know down below did you play the demo are you planning on picking up the full game how do you like the tracks that we have here in the demo? I want to hear all of your thoughts down below. And if you haven't already, go ahead while you're down there, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and give the video a like as well. It really helps me grow this channel a lot. With all that said, everyone, I hope you have had a great day. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.